Hey folks, Ashell Things We're going to talk about vertical mattress sutures today. Um, you know, often we look in textbooks and they've got, and this is a, they've got some really nice pictures. This is a couple editions old. This is Mealy and Rose in Periodontics. Um, they've got really great photos of doing suturing. And, but normally, you know, I've looked in other textbooks and it's two small little drawings of different types of techniques. Obviously, we all use the interrupted suturing technique. But when you're starting to get these other fancy dancy ones, horizontal mattress, internal mattress, inter modified internal mattress, vertical mattress, like when do I, when would I ever use that? And sometimes you become curious and you want to use it, but you don't know the, implica the indications for it. Well, I was curious and I asked. So here's one technique and use it, this is the vertical mattress uh, suture technique. And I'm going to describe, we'll use a chamois cloth to sort of describe the principles, pretty easy. But this is sort of when you would, one of probably many thousand indications. That's my coverage statement. So when we're, say you have a patient that presents with uh, a recessive defect. My gingiva just moved on me. Recessive defect on, uh, say their canines. I mean, it's a classic spot. Anteriors, anteriors, uh, dentition. So you've got recession on the canine. And I mean, there's th again, there's a thousand different ways to uh, coronally position, reposition that flap. And in one technique, use a couple vertical um, releasing incisions, elevate the papillas, place your connective tissue, do your root root bio modification, and then replace your paddle or your facial flap. Now you can see in the the papillas on the paddle side are still intact. So you can see them poking through the interproximal region. Now what we want to do is we want to ensure that when we re-approximate re this and coronally reposition this flap, that those papillas, because it's becoming more in the aesthetic zone, the aesthetic zone being maybe, I mean, some folks you could consider from the canine to canine to canine, or some folks the bicuspid to bicuspid, even second bicuspid. Um, as humans, we want to control the situation as best as possible. Does it make a difference? Hard to know. In any event, what we want to do with using, instead of using just interrupted sutures, which will, when you place them, they would sort of uh, push down the papillas. I mean, you'd get approximation of the uh, papillas in the tissue. But when the patient's talking, even though it might be a, a soft diet, when they're talking, the mucosa is still moving, especially their um, movable, unattached mucosa. So what we want to do is we want to keep those papillas together. So when I when I say papillas, I'm meaning the paddle portion and the facial portion. So when we use a vertical mattress suture, we're going to approximate those and get a little more fixation of those uh, interdental papillas. So I'm going to switch to the chamois cloth here. So what do we I want to talk about a vertical mattress suture? Now, when we're talking, let's compare it to the interrupted suture. This is my chamois cloth. It's a, just a really easy way to, de to uh, demonstrate. So th what I've done is just place a basic interrupted suture. So imagine this is um, some sort of flap, dental alveolar surgery. You've extracted a tooth and you've reapproximated the, the flap where you want it and you just place a, a regular interrupted suture. Not a lot of aesthetic concerns. Quite frankly, you don't even know how to do any other suturing techniques, so that's all you got in your, ar your armamentarium. Welcome to most of our uh, most of us, and for all intents and purposes, it will work, no problem. As long as the, as long as it's tension free, you've cleaned the, underneath the flap, removed all the debris, you're good to go. What if you're doing aesthetic gingival surgery, and what you want to do is now pr imagine these are two papillas, and you want to reapproximate them, but you don't want them to kind of be loosey goosey like when the patient starts to be functioning on these, even though perhaps. They may be on a liquid diet, they'll still be talking. And some of the, you know, the mucosa moves, especially the unattached. So what you want to do is you want to reapproximate, but you want to hold that papilla in place. So it'll, it'll still kind of, you'll still have some movement down here, but at the, say, two to three millimeters away from, even up to five millimeters away from the tip of the papilla, you want it to be, um, not tensioned, but you want it to be secured so you won't have as much movement. 
Well, in comes the vertical mattress suture. So I've placed one here, and I'll show it. We're going to go. It's really simple. Um, you can see now that if the mucosa is moving, my papilla, pretend that's my papilla again, is now um, not moving. So again, we're, it, this is all in humans and a human's effort to control the situation. I mean, how often do we go through that in life? So how do we do that? And then on top, because now we haven't gone all the way to the top, we've placed an interrupted uh, suture on top. So a vertical mattress, then an interrupted suture, and boom, you're done. And we would be doing this in, a, say, a coronally placed, coronally positioned flap. So here, I mean, a vertical mattress suture is very simple. This is your papilla region. Go through, say, the facial. Get through both tissues. Yes, this is my, uh, I just finished fixing a Power Rangers uh, costume this morning. And then straight back through. And then tie off on the initial side. Let's tie it off with my fingers. And there is your vertical mattress. Pretty simple. And then tie it off there. So we, this comes into play, especially in the aesthetic zone, when, say, we have a, a large recessive defect and you want to do a connective tissue graft or alongside of uh, a coronary position flap and you've you've placed some vertical releasing incisions here and you want to bring these papillas down. Correction, you want to bring the, the papillas coronally. So this will be use the vertical mattress between uh, in the interproximal region in an effort again to um, control the situation as best as you can and reapproximate those papillas and fixate them in the position that you want, hoping that they will heal that way. So that's it. Cheers.